Session 1, Day 1, An Unforgettable First Impression, Philippians 1, verse 1 through 2. Today's verse, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from our God and our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, verse 1 through 2. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ready or not, here I come. Kool-Aid stained fingers pressed into my closed eyelids as friends scurried to hiding places. Desks became castles, chairs became caves, and tapestry drapes became towering fortresses. Squeals filled the air as one by one a poorly camouflaged foot or a muffled giggle gave away our secrets. No matter how many times we played hide-and-seek, the game never grew old. We all walk through seasons when joy plays an unwelcome game of hide-and-seek. Finding joy when life is out of focus can seem daunting. Disappointment, worry, and adversity blur our lens on life, distorting our perspective. This sabotages our ability to experience meaningful relationships and see our potential in Christ. Applying the principles found in Philippians will help us to transform faulty thought patterns and choose contentment regardless of circumstance. Joy-thirsty women, when life is unraveling, we can find joy by focusing our lens on God's perspective. I encourage you to read the entire book of Philippians before you begin this study. Paul's lens on life was crafted in the crucible of adversity. The author of Philippians suffered many challenges that could have easily obscured his joy. Over the course of his lifetime, he experienced hardships, blindness, beatings, and imprisonment. Yet, Paul's struggles proved to strengthen his relationship with God. Paul wrote Philippians while he was under house arrest in Rome, circa 61 AD, to the church in Philippi, a city named after King Philip of Macedonia, the father of Alexander the Great. Philippi was a prosperous colony of Roman citizens, many of whom spoke Latin and were retired military men. Amplify. I confess that I tend to ignore or rush through the first few verses of Paul's letters in the New Testament. At first glance, they seem like nothing more than meaningless introductions. In retrospect, it is easy to see how these significant verses set the tone for the rest of the letter. Paul makes an unforgettable first impression. The beginnings of Philippians is typical of Paul's letters. It quickly identifies three elements, the sender, the receiver, and the greeting. Paul and Timothy are working together not as co-authors, but as servants of Christ. How does Paul introduce himself? I've introduced myself to a lot of people in a lot of places, but have never led with, Hi, I'm Angela, a servant of Christ. Usually, in attempts to make a great first impression, we add a few descriptive titles after saying hello. Paul instantly identifies himself with Christ, making a strong and memorable first impression. His humility challenges me to pull back the tapestry drapes of my life and let you see some seasons when my joy went into hiding. As we begin, allow me to introduce myself as a joy-thirsty girl with a grateful heart. Apply. A call to ministry. Growing up, the sound of 88 keys on a piano and voices in three-part harmony often filled our home. Not surprisingly, I majored in music education at Evangel University in Springfield, Missouri. I met my husband, 
Dale Donatio, there while he was studying pre-law. After a God-directed shift, he completed his Masters of Divinity in 1993, and we were married a week later. Dale and I spent a year in ministry in Maui, Hawaii, before moving to Virginia to serve as youth pastor and worship pastor. These formative years allowed us the opportunity to cut our teeth in ministry before answering the call to serve as lead pastors. During nearly two decades of ministry, my relationship with the Lord dramatically changed. Fearfully and Wonderfully Made In 2001, my life was deteriorating in every way, body, mind, and spirit. Perfectionism, performance, and the weight of other people's expectations blurred my lens on life. I became aware of how much I found my identity as a person and in Christ in what I did for Him. God was beginning the process of focusing my lens on His perspective, leading me toward a new kind of life. Looking back, I can see how God was lovingly reshaping me. But at the time, it was painful. For as long as I can remember, I have struggled with physical challenges. As a child, I needed hospitalization for osteomyelitis, a rare condition where the strep virus enters the bloodstream, attacking the bone marrow. As I grew older, I faced other complications with my tonsils, my knee, deteriorating eyesight, endometriosis, and a difficult pregnancy resulting in a C-section. Due to endometriosis, I faced a slim chance of ever having children. Despite the doctor's prognosis, I am the blessed mother of two children. My daughter, Gabrielle, born in 1996, and my son, Christian, born in 1999. I used to refer to myself as the reject off the assembly line of heaven. Looking at life through the blurry lens of health complications, I didn't like what I saw. However, God convicted me and showed me through His Word, especially through Psalm 139, that I am his design and he has a purpose for me. The words of Psalm 139 verse 14 leapt off the page. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I had no idea how much I would need that perspective shift. A Defining Moment In 2001, after living with chronic pain from endometriosis, I had a hysterectomy. One week after surgery, I was bleeding badly enough at home to call my doctor. After following his advice and going to the emergency room, they admitted me for observation. To make a long story short, over the course of 12 hours, while fully awake, I lost over half of my blood. Nurses frantically came in and out of my hospital room, attempting to stop me from hemorrhaging to death. At 3.30 a.m., I looked at the clock and terror became my bedside visitor. I thought to myself, I'm not going to make it until 6 a.m. when my doctor is on call. That proved to be a defining moment in my life. God was refocusing my lens. Later, as I was still processing all that had happened, I said to the Lord, I don't ever want to feel that desperate again. I heard him respond, That is how I always want you to feel, that dependent on me. God was changing the faulty thought patterns that threatened to choke out my joy. I died to self in that hospital in a tangible way. I began to journal during this period of my life, and my relationship with the Lord became much more intimate and personal. My thoughts and questions became songs that eventually formed my first album, This Journey. I've included lyrics from the album throughout this study, praying they will inspire you to learn to live in joy no matter where your journey takes you. 
We can find joy during seasons of adversity with one subtle shift, allowing God to focus our lens on His perspective. In the coming weeks, we'll see that Paul developed a kingdom perspective, viewing people and circumstances through God's eyes. Philippians may only be four short chapters long, but don't let that fool you. It's a treasure trove of insights. As we walk through Philippians, we'll discover how we, just like Paul, can find joy during adversity. Get ready for an amazing journey. Ask. Paul makes an unforgettable first impression. How do you usually introduce yourself? And in what way are you inspired by Paul? What is one area of your life God is challenging you to become more dependent on Him? Prayer Challenge Holy Spirit, open my eyes. I want my first impressions and opening remarks to identify me as a servant of Christ. I want to live a life marked by joy. Help me to understand all that will mean. Amen.